Nowadays, we create video games through general purpose game engines that provide us all the necessary tools to develop any kind of project. What if we create a game engine from scratch in such a way to easily customize it at low level for our specific games? This is the Game Engine Development Series, a new tutorial series in which we will build our own game engine completely from the ground up. First of all, what is a game engine? A game engine is a complex software system designed to simplify the development of video games. It is composed by other software subsystems, also called software components. In software engineering, a software component is a software package, module or subsystem that encapsulates a set of interfaces, functions or data related to a specific functionality. Let's see what are the main software components that compose a game engine. We have the graphics engine, the physics engine, the graphical user interface system, the audio engine, the input system, the network system, and last but not least, there is the entity component system. This is a really high-level view of a game engine architecture, and we will face it and all its software components in detail along the series. Good! In order to face the development of a game engine, we have to care about the so-called software development life cycle. In software engineering, the software development life cycle is a process composed mainly by the following stages. Requirement analysis, design, implementation, testing, and documentation. For this series, we will focus mainly on the requirements, design, and implementation parts, but let's take a look at each stage. Requirements analysis is the initial part of the development life cycle, where the specification and various details of the project are defined. Also, the purpose, the scope, the objectives and the use cases of the project are defined as well. These and many other information are all organized in the so-called Requirements Analysis document, or RAD. Once the requirements have been analyzed, it's the turn of the design part. Software design is the part of software development process where it is decided how to implement concretely the software architecture and consequently how to make the various software system and subsystem that we compose it. This process is done through the usage of tools like UML, that is the Unified Modeling Language, Software Design Patterns and so on. The design is guided and so constrained by the requirements defined earlier. All the diagrams and information collected during this part are usually gathered in the software design document, or SDD. The next step is the software implementation, in which the various software systems, classes, structures defined during the design part are concretely developed in a specific programming language. Where the software project is in a good stage of development, or even part of it, the testing part comes into the game. In this step, the software is tested in order to verify the overall quality. In general, each developed software system or component is checked in order to verify that meets the requirements that guided its design and development, responds correctly to all kinds of inputs, performs its functions within an acceptable time, is sufficiently usable, and so on. As a very last step, we have the software documentation part, where a written text or illustration is created in order to explain how the software operates or how to use it. Very well, now that we generally know how a software development lifecycle works, let's apply it to the development of our game engine. Let's start with the requirements. To better identify our project, Let's give it a name. Well, it's a game engine that will be built from the ground up. We can call it Ground Engine. Purpose of the project, Ground Engine would be a game engine for the development of 3D games at low level. 
programming language C++. The target platforms, Windows initially, macOS and Linux later. Good, let's go ahead to the design part. To design our project, we will use the UML through the help of Star UML tool. Let's start by selecting the root item. As we can see from the status bar, this is the project item. Let's rename it in Ground Engine. Now, let's select the first child of the project item. This is a new ML model. UML model captures a view of a system. It's an abstraction of the system with a certain purpose. This purpose determines what is to be included in the model and what is irrelevant. The first model should be the ground engine itself, so let's call it ground engine. At this point, we will want our game engine can be deployed as a library in order to be used by other developers to create their own project. In this way, a developer can use the engine by following these steps. Creation of an application project, linkage of the application project with the engine library, development of the game application by using the engine API. We will talk about the engine API in the next tutorials. Now, let's see how to represent the dependency between the application and the engine in UML. Let's create another model and let's call it samples. By adding this model, we create a view to the samples of our engine. Let's add a further model and let's call it ground example application. This is a specific example application where we will demonstrate how to use the engine. Here, let's create a further view to the example application and let's call it executable release. In this view, we will depict how the example application will appear at the release, showing the various dependencies with the other systems or components and so on. In order to do this concretely, we have to create a new ML diagram, in particular the component diagram. Let's call it again executable release. In general, a component diagram breaks down the system under development into various high levels of functionality. In this case, the system is the example application. As the name suggests, a component diagram is made of components. In this case, we have two components, the ground example application, that is the main character in this view, and the ground engine, the component the example application depends on. Good, but there are other info to show yet. First, we have to define the type of these components. This can be done by set the so-called stereotype. The ground example application is of type application. The engine, instead, is of type library, more specifically a dynamic library. The dependency is shown by adding a dashed line from the application to the engine. Now, we have to describe how these high-level components are manifested concretely. This can be done by using artifacts. An artifact is a physical entity that is generally produced by a software development process. In few words, an artifact can be an executable, as in the case of the example application, a dynamic library, as in the case of our engine, 
and many other concrete entities, like Sus code files and so on. Very well, before to get into the implementation part, let's see what we have to do by following the diagram just created. So we have to create the ground engine project, create the ground example application project, and link the ground engine to ground example application. Good, we have gathered all the necessary information to start the implementation. For the Game Engine Development Tutorial Series, we will use Visual Studio 2019 Community, but any other IDE should be fine. However, Visual Studio is strongly recommended. Let's click on Create a new project. At this point, let's select Empty Project. In the end, we have to define the name of our project. Let's call it Ground Engine. Be careful to select the place solution and project in the same directory option. Let's click create. Once our project is opened, let's activate the show all files function of the solution explorer. This function allows us to operate directly to the file system of the project. In this way, we can create folders directly in the project folder. Let's add the first folder to the ground engine and let's call it Include. In this folder will be placed all the header files and more specifically the interfaces provided by the engine that will be used by other users or developers to create their own project games, apps and so on based on the engine. Let's go ahead and let's add a further folder called Source. As the name suggests, here we will place all the source code, in particular all the private header and C++ files that will be hidden from the outside. At this point, let's select the x64 platform and let's open the ground engine project properties. Be sure that the selected platform is always x64. Here, the first thing to do is to select another configuration type. As we have said during the design part, we want to build our engine as a dynamic library. Then, let's use the latest version available of C++, the C++17. What next? Well, let's check the output directory. Output directory is the path where the compiled program will be placed. Currently, the path is composed by the solution directory, that is, uh, in this case, the C drive, the project folder and ground engine. Remember that the Visual Studio macros with dir as suffix have always a backslash at the end. The path is also composed by the platform macro, that is x86 or x64, based on the selected platform. At the end we have the configuration macro, whose value is debug, release and so on. For our project this output directory is fine, let's only place all this content in a bean directory. Let's do the same thing with the intermediate directory, where all the intermediate files generated during the compilation of the project are placed. Here we can use intermediate folder instead of bean. Let's also subdivide the intermediate files by adding the project name macro. This subdivision will be more clear when we will add the example application. 
So let's save the properties and let's create a new folder in our project. Let's call it Samples. In this folder, we will place all the example applications that will make use of our game engine. Let's start to create one of them. So let's go to Ground Engine Solution and let's add a new project. As always, let's select Empty Project. The location is the path to the samples folder just created. The application name is Ground Example Application. Good, let's select again the Show All Files function. At this point, let's add a new folder and let's call it Source. Here we don't need an include folder since our application will not provide any kind of function or interfaces to the outside. Now we can create the famous main C++ file. Let's create the main entry point function. As we have already done with Ground Engine, let's adjust the various properties. So let's change the C version. Since we want an executable application, configuration type remains of type application. The output and intermediate directories will be the same as those of the Ground Engine project. Here the project name macro will help us to subdivide the intermediate files between application and engine in such a way to avoid file conflicts. Now we can save the properties. At this point we should set our example application as a startup project, since it's the only project here that can be executed. As we have already seen during the design part, application depends on the engine, so let's define this aspect concretely in project's dependency. Ground engine doesn't depend on any other project for now, but the example application does. As we can see the dependencies define also the build order, in this case ground engine is built at the beginning, application instead at the end. Very good, let's build our solution. Let's see what happens. Let's select the ground engine project and let's click refresh. Now we have two new folders, bean and intermediate. In bean we have the example application. We don't have the ground engine DLL because simply we haven't created any source files yet. In the intermediate folder instead, we have all the intermediate files generated during the compilation subdivided by project. That's all for now, folks. Today we have seen how to start the development of a game engine. I hope you enjoyed this first video of the game engine development series. Thanks for watching.